Welcome back everyone. We get to talk about another iPad this time around, and this one is the iPad Air 4th generation. Now this iPad, in my opinion, is an extremely, extremely awesome upgrade coming from the 3rd generation iPad Air. Now this iPad came out in 2020, and although I still think this is an awesome iPad, the successor of this iPad, the iPad Air 5, should be right around the corner, and if you're watching this you know, video probably like months and months away from now, then you've probably already seen the iPad Air 5, and I would just recommend substituting everything I'm saying in this video for that specific iPad and I would recommend going for that iPad if available. If not, if it's still not out, then the iPad Air 4 is still an awesome iPad that you can just go inside of the Apple Store and pick up. Now this iPad is approaching two years old this year. It came out in 2020 in September, but a very interesting thing about this iPad was that because of that pandemic and everything, Apple went ahead and had two events. They had the September event, then they had another event. The September event where they typically would release their iPhone they actually announced this iPad and the Apple Watches and everything. But with this iPad, this was the first one to actually bring that Apple A14 Bionic chip inside of it. And that's actually very interesting. This chipset came out before it came out on the iPhone. That's happened a couple times before, but that's actually a very interesting thing. So this iPad is going to realistically last as long as the iPhone 12. And that iPhone pretty much just came out not even two years ago. So we still have a long lifespan with this iPad. Visually though, this is another big thing about this iPad. It has a 10.9 inch liquid retina IPS panel on the front. It's a very high resolution panel. We do not have ProMotion or 120 Hertz or anything, but we still have a very good looking panel and we have a very strong feeling iPad. This does not feel cheap. This does not look cheap. And when you look at this iPad and you look at even like the iPad Pros, the M1 iPad Pros, they kind of look the same. There's a better camera setup on the newer ones, but this thing still looks very good. And I am for for sure a huge fan of the way this iPad looks without a doubt. Now we do have USB Type-C port on the bottom, which is awesome. We also have a Touch ID sensor up top, so we can go ahead and unlock our iPad that way, which I actually do prefer. You know, I don't, I love Face ID, but I do like having that Touch ID sensor there, which is really nice. We do have also a really cool thing, the flat sides, which is awesome. You know, we typically see that for the more expensive iPads, but now that the iPad Mini 6 also has this feature, I mean, it's really cool. We also have this full aluminum back, which looks beautiful and just like many other iPads, this thing still feels extremely premium. We also have that single camera setup on the back as well. And as I mentioned, the thing about this iPad and why it holds up so well is that it just doesn't look cheap. It just doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't perform cheap. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing cheap about this iPad. Really the main downside of this thing, I would say, is the lack of 120 hertz. But even that isn't that big of a deal anymore. And the fact that iOS and iPadOS is already so smooth, I for one am a humongous fan of the way this iPad just feels and looks, and I definitely do think it's more of a pro than a con in my opinion. Now in terms of the camera setup, this iPad has a single 12 megapixel sensor on the back, and we have a 7 megapixel camera on the front. Now the best way I can explain this camera is that it is almost the exact same camera setup that we have on an iPhone XR. So imagine an iPhone XR that came out in 2018, that camera was pretty good, it wasn't old, it wasn't outdated, it definitely was, you know, it was a less of a camera upgrade coming from an iPhone 10, I would say, than the iPhone 10 as in XS Max, but still the iPhone XR's camera is really good, and this iPad is pretty much the same exact thing. We have the ability of shooting 1080p videos at 60 frames per second on the front, and we have the ability of shooting 4K at 60 videos on the back, and that is a really cool thing. Having that type of you know capability right there is awesome. Now the only thing we're kind of missing out that have came out since this iPad's release is the thing like you know multiple camera setups on the back of this iPad, but also the lack of an ultra wide sensor on the front. We now have that center stage feature, which is really cool. It pretty much puts you at the center of FaceTime calls and everything. So even if you're moving around, you have that feature. This iPad does not support it, but still, you know, it's good enough. It's actually really good. I don't have too many complaints about it. And if you're in the market, you can't really go wrong with this iPad camera. Of course, with the newer iPads, it's much better. And with your iPhone, you probably have a better camera there. If you have an iPhone XR or newer, you have the same, if not better, camera on your iPhone than on this iPad. So I don't really know too many people who would, you know, pick up an iPad just because of that. But it is a really cool thing that it has a really decent camera on it. Again, the only thing it's missing is center stage on the front with the ultra wide camera, but also additional camera setups on the back. But I think it's a pretty good camera in 2022, especially for a cheaper iPad Air. You know, it's definitely not the cheapest iPad, but it's still pretty good for sure. 
Now talking about the longevity of this iPad, this thing, you know, because it has that Apple A14 Bionic chip inside of it, this thing is going to be lasting for a very long amount of time. This thing is not going anywhere anytime soon. And I think that's one of the biggest advantages of buying an iPad like this. You know that if you go and pick it up, it's not going to be outdated. It's not going to be slow. It's not going to be, you know, a bad performing iPad by any means. And again, that is a really cool advantage with this iPad. You can go ahead and pick this iPad up and pretty much not have a bad performing or bad, you know, lasting iPad. This thing is going to last for many, many years to come. And if I were you, and even like two years from now, if this iPad is still, you know, the iPad that Apple's selling, or maybe if Apple has the iPad Air 6 by then, this is still a really decent iPad. I look at the iPad Air 3 that came out kind of in 2019. That iPad is still pretty relevant, and it's approaching three years old as of this point. This iPad Air, I think, is still here to stay. I think it's still super relevant, and you can't really go wrong with it because it's going to be lasting for a long period of time in terms of software updates. So, in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up there. Now, in terms of the performance of this iPad, this thing does have that Apple A14 Bionic chip inside of it with 4 gigabytes of RAM on both of the models. Now, like I mentioned, that chipset inside is still super relevant, a very good performing chipset. I've had very few complaints about this, you know, iPad's performance pretty much my whole entire life. However, the RAM is the only thing that would be like, okay, well, maybe if you were to go, you know, have a lot of intensive, you know, applications, maybe getting the M1 iPad Pro is maybe a little bit better. To give you some perspective, the new iPhone 12 Pro Maxes and the 13 Pro Maxes have six gigabytes of RAM. That is a lot of RAM to have on an iPhone, but I think four is starting to become the new two. So if you remember two gigabytes of RAM was pretty much, if you have two gigs, that's more than enough, you're gonna be fine. Now it's starting to look like, you know, if you have more, this is, starting to become the norm as applications get bigger and bigger really the speed of this ipad is good the smoothness everything is perfect about it but the ram is the only thing probably in the next three to four years that i would kind of see like you know six gigabytes of ram would be the preferred the m1 ipad pros go for, i think way more than even twice this amount of ram so if you're somebody who's going to be using a lot of intensive applications do keep in mind that you know getting like the m1 ipad pro may be a better choice however for basic things even heavier intensive things like video editing taking notes notes, using the Apple Pencil to go ahead and write down notes with this thing is awesome. Different things like that, you're going to be getting a really strong experience from this thing, you know? Really the only thing I would even kind of see that it starts, you know, kind of slowing down at is if you're editing super heavy, massive, long movies on this thing. If you're trying to play very, very intensive games on this iPad 2, you may run into some issues here and there, but I don't really think it's too big of a deal. And I think the performance of this iPad is definitely still relevant and it's really not going anywhere anytime soon in my opinion. So in terms of that, that covers it up there. In terms of the overall battery life, this thing has a 7,606 million power battery inside of it. And that's a pretty good sized battery to have, you know? Like I mentioned, it's not a bad battery life. It's still pretty relevant. And like I mentioned before, I mean, you know, you're probably going to be around a charger. This thing is still going to be super good in terms of battery life. It's not the best, I would say, even like the iPad 9 generation is very good in terms of the battery life, but this thing is pretty good still. And I don't really have too many complaints about it there. So in terms of the battery life that covers it up there, and to be honest, I think the iPad Air 4 is still completely worth it in 2022. I think this is an awesome iPad with a lot of capability, and I don't really see too many things wrong with this iPad. The only things that I would even kind of like is like ProMotion display or like extra camera sensors, bigger battery, more RAM. But honestly, there's already an iPad for that, the M1 iPad Pros. If you're not in that market, then this is still a really good iPad, and I don't think you can go wrong with it in my opinion, so... In terms of that, that covers it up there. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.